welcome back for test number eight in the Total Tactics Total Tactics testing series. There we go. Um, this tactic, I think, is is going to be pretty fun. Um, it's one that sort of was born out of just sort of playing around and having something work out. It's sort of, it's a hybrid maybe of a couple tactics we've already had on the channel, right? So it's, it's got some of the 5212 kind of baked into it. It's got a lot of the 41212 baked into it. It's got a lot of the false box baked into it. It sort of pulls together a lot of what we've learned over the channel um, time together into a tactic, which makes it really exciting for me too, because I think it kind of continues that process of something we talked about where go ahead, download tactics, just learn from what you see on the pitch and try to take advantage of that when you're building tactics. And that's something I tried to do when creating this one. We went back, I went kind of back to the false box, which was built before the narrow diamond tactic, where I learned a lot of new things about FM22 tactics from Fuzzy. And the I tried to reapply some of those principles to an older tactic, which was that the 4-2-2-2-2 false box tactic. And I think you'll like the results. So let's take a look at the actual tactical shape as well. And I'll kind of explain how it sort of combines both the false box elements of taking some more risks with the fuzzy diamond uh, like lessons about taking fewer risks and trying to find a balance between the two. And remember, you can always download these tactics by joining the Total Tactics Discord. The link there is in the description. There is a channel called Tested Tactics YouTube where you can download all of the tactics. And there's a link to a Dropbox folder where the tactics are also being archived. So make sure you get involved in the Discord, join the discussion, become a verified user. And before you do that, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel as well. So here's your first look at the tactic. It is a 4-2-1-2-1. So it's kind of like an inverted narrow diamond um, referred to affectionately on my stream. You can follow me on Twitch. The link is in the description um, by uh, one of the viewers as the Double Doritos. Um, you know, I'll let you figure out uh, where that name comes from. But th there's a couple of important things about this tactic that make it somewhat unique uh, to the channel. And the first thing is the fullbacks are on support and they are not inverted wingbacks. I think that is really the key. I mean, the inversions are there as well. The RPMs played a role in a couple other, in another tactic already on the channel. The double shadow strikers played a role on other tactics on the channel. Um, so th there are some similarities here, especially to that false box tactic and to the narrow diamond tactic as well that was uh, done earlier. But it is different in enough ways that I think it warrants kind of a discussion here. Um, so before we get to the highlights, let me tackle a few of the instructions, right? So roaming playmakers, baked in, take more risks, roam from position, which is something really interesting and will come up in the highlights, especially because we've talked so many times in this channel about how we want to take fewer risks um, as a way to really control the play, which is something the CM attack is set to do. Um, but the Shadow Strikers are not. They can't be given that instruction. It's baked into that role as well. So this tactic has more of a balance between players who are taking more risks and players who are taking few risks, fewer risks. So same with that advance forward, take fewer risks as well. These fullbacks take fewer risks, hold position, right? We're not telling them to overlap. They're not being told to cross like in a certain area or anything like that, right? So it's balanced between you've got five offensive players, four offensive players, sorry, taking fewer risks and four offensive players taking more risks. And those more risk players here, these RPMs, on defense, they won't be risky, right? They will be set in front of the defense Defenders, forming a nice shield. And when we get to the results, that's going to bear out um, in some of the defensive numbers that we see. So uh, really quick before we jump into the highlights, take a look at where the goals are coming from. Um, 37 goals in 36 games by the advanced forward, but also Muriel, one of the shadow strikers, has scored
scored uh, 15, and the other one, Insigne, has scored 7. So another 22 goals here from this next level of play. So yeah, the advance forward is getting the majority of the goals, but also the shadow strikers are, are getting quite a few. And the assists are kind of coming from all over the park. So Zelinski, who played mostly as the CM attack, has 10 assists. Osiman himself is providing 10 assists for these three players that are, are getting in on the scoring action. Muriel has 11 from Shadow Striker. Insigne has 17. Um, some of that is on set pieces, but this tactic only scored three corner kick goals, right? Maybe five because of Koulibaly here, but so not a ton, right? So Insigne is not getting all of these set piece assists. Some of most of it is open play assists. So it's an interesting thing here about this tactic, but let's, let's check out some of the highlights of the double Doritos in action. All right. So we're going to pick up this highlight uh, just after a clearance. So this defender right here, Mosquera, has just cleared the ball. And Romario, who's one of the RPMs, um, is picking the ball up here at the top of the box. And two major things I want you to kind of watch in this is, one, how the opponent fullbacks interact with the offensive possession. And two, uh, the sort of, again, something we talked about many, many times on the channel, what take fewer risks will do to your to your build-up play. All right, so let's hit play and kind of watch what Romario does uh, with the ball here. Uh, this is an offline save I'm doing with uh, Frankfurt, where I'm also using this tactic currently. So I wanted to give you a little bit, you know, a different view than just like Napoli every time, right? So Romario to Haidara to Twanzebe to Haidara, right? Twanzebe turned it out, you know, and here's this fullback, okay? Cucarella is watching uh, Twanzebe, who is our fullback, right? But on support. So Twanzebe is not supposed to like dive to the end line unless absolutely possible. Um, Sarawi is, I believe, the CM on attack. No, Borges is the CM on attack. Sarawi right now is playing as a shadow striker alongside Yeboa with Selki as the uh, advance forward. So the shadow striker here also, you know, it's going to take this this pass. So they, they take a few more risks, right? But like also Sarawi is going to just back the ball out here to Twanzebe. Twanzebe doesn't overlap here, right? It's something that you might have done in your save, but instead he takes the safe pass back to Haidara. And then Borges finally in space is able to see Yeboa in a hole hit him, and then he scores. But what I want you to look at sort of here with, with this shot that Yeboa takes and the pass that Borges makes Right here, we have Selkie occupying this defender, right? The other defender, Mosquera, is stepping up on Borges, which leaves Yeboa open, okay? And the, the problem is this fullback, Caligari, should be getting tighter to him. Um, or this midfielder should be tracking his run as well. Or actually, yeah, that's an attacking midfielder. Palestri should be, like, uh, tracking this run. Palestri doesn't because the fullback's in the neighborhood. The fullback, though, isn't marking tightly because of Kelly out here, right? So, so Kelly here is holding this wide position. He's not going deep, right? He's not dragging the defender away from the play, but he's keeping this fullback honest. Caligari will never be ball side of the back post, uh, uh, the back post marker. Like this offensive player will always in these tactics be inside of the fullback, which basically makes the fullback irrelevant, right? Like Yaboa is on the left. He's right footed, right? So his shooting foot's going to be away from the fullback. So the fullback won't be able to pressure the shot. And he's going to be able to take like a, a nice finisher on this ball in space. But you know, the, the major takeaway here is the fullbacks are not useful in the defense because they're not guarding overlaps because the fullbacks don't take them and they never get centrally enough to trouble the shadow strikers or the striker um, on defense. This other player in the midfield is not tracking that run because the fullback has got a, an eye on it and is spying it, but doing so ineffectively, right? So Yeboa finds him in space. Yeah, I mean, Borges finds Yeboa in space. First time finish and the goal. So you can see, too, Davi Selke had a hat trick in this game. Key thing here I want you to see is this is also the very next goal, Davi Selke in that hat trick we just talked about here in this game against Leipzig. And a key thing about this tactic is it does have a balance between take fewer risks and take more risks because those RPMs 
have it baked in that they will take more risks. But because they're sit so deep, when you're in defense, right, they are usually covering, like, in shielding in front of the center back. So it's a very defensively strong tactic. But on offense, when the opportunity presents itself, they will both roam for positions, obviously a roaming playmaker, and take more risks. And so here you're going to see sort of the best of both worlds and Hydara's transition game as this uh, RPM here. So Hydara is going to get the interception and then after that will be a part of the buildup and make, an, make a push, uh, taking a risky push up through space and getting pretty far forward um, to drive the attack. And it's perfect timing and like results in a goal, obviously, which is why we're looking at the highlight. But you'll, you'll see Hydara, you know, sitting deep here in front of the defenders. Boom. It's tipped away by Twanzebe. Hydara is there, right? So now in the buildup, Romario, Borges, and now Hydara ends up with the ball and he just drives into space there, lays it off for Selke, and then it's it's a goal. So the, the transition game by the RPM, you know, being there for the interception, picking the ball up in defense, sitting deep when Twanzebe pokes it away, and then driving up the channel, um, being able to work with the CM attack, who is Borges in this highlight, um, and then continue Borges' run into the 18, lay off the ball for Selke, who scores, right? So uh, we talk a lot about taking fewer risks on this, cha on this channel, and the advance forward is set to do that. The CM on attack is also set for take fewer risks. The fullbacks are set for take fewer risks, but then those DMs who are shielding the defense normally and will do so uh, when the opponents are in possession, but in that transition game, they are going to take more risks to help uh, progress the play and drive the play forward, which is something that I think makes this tactic very offensively dynamic. We're back with Napoli here for the final highlight, and one thing on display in this highlight again is the take fewer risks actions that your striker will take. And in this tactic, it plays fullbacks instead of inverted wingbacks as the last several have. And so watching kind of how a fullback acts in this tactic, I think is kind of important. And the left back here, Mario Rui, is going to be on hand for the assist. So Pessina here starts starts the play with the ball, finds Fabian, who plays a ball here inside to Osiman. And I think in a lot of situations, we would see Osiman, um, if on take more risks, would try on the little half turn here to break into the area, right? So he receives the ball. He's moving back a little bit towards the ball, but instead of trying to hit that gap, he just pulls the ball out, looks for the safe pass, and kind of keeps uh, possession ticking over, right? So he doesn't see anything. Zelensky also take fewer risks as that CM attack. Fabian plays all the way back to Kulabayi, and now here is where Ruby gets the ball, and we start to kind of look at uh, what's happening, right? So midfielder. Marquinhos, um, he's playing a DM position here in this tactic he, for PSG. He's looking for at Fabian, right? We have defender Kimpembe, defender Sergio Ramos. Ramos right now has the task of marking Osiman, and Insigne has the task of like being marked by Kimpembe here. So Insigne is a shadow striker. Uh, Zielinski is not a shadow striker. Muriel is the other one here on the back post. So there's your front three, right? And so what is interesting here is because he's a shadow striker, Kimpembe is going to step up to mark him which then opens space for Osiman to run right in behind Kimpembe. And Mario Rui is going to have just an incredible angle uh, for this ball. He doesn't have to go deep to play the cross. He can play kind of an early cross here um, to Kimpembe into space. And Hakimi is going to kind of push out towards Rui and not be there to help um, at all or, or not be there to, like, mark... Insigne or keep an eye on Insigne so that Kimpembe can keep Osiman uh, in front of him. But like, it's just textbook early cross by the DM into space. Kimpembe has stepped up on Insigne and there's just like the wide open lane for that diagonal run for Osiman who finishes it. So the fullbacks, because they're not inverted, and but they are on support and take fewer risks, will hold that fullback in a wide position of the opposition, which creates passing lanes for that fullback centrally, either to hit an unmarked shadow strike into the box, or um, if the defenders are out of line marking the shadow strikers, there's diagonal runs for the advance forward as well. Um, and this is just on display here, and fullback play isn't something we've focused a lot on on the channel, so I thought it might be interesting to see that goal as well. Oh, 
Okay, so take a look at these results, and you can see three out of four of the leagues ended in championships, in addition to a second place finish in the Balance League. Let's look a little bit more deeper at these results. So in the Elite League, the tactic really shown. It's an eight-point victory over Liverpool with 77 points in the Elite League. But perhaps even more importantly, the plus 33 goal difference dwarfs what comes next in the that table, right, which is all the way down to Dortmund, who must have had a hard luck season in fifth with a plus 21. Um, in the elite league, only conceding 44 goals is a very stout defense, which is what Napoli's been able to achieve here in the elite teams league while still scoring 77, which tied for the best with Dortmund, who we said maybe had a little bit of an unlucky season. So it's scoring goals at more than a two goals a game clip, and it's not allowing all that many goals either. So uh, the elite team's result is is incredible. The, is it the best finish we've seen in the elite league? No, but it's extremely good and definitely proves that this tactic is, is here to stay. In the balanced league, this tactic put up 81 points on way to second place, which is a big point total, right? Liverpool often wins this division. 88 is a lot, but plus 64 is kind of absurd, right? Like 97 goals in this division from a tactic with one striker and two DMs is, is a lot, right? That's a lot of goals. It shows like the offensive potency that you saw in some of those highlights and the kind of like flexible attack that those RPMs kind of create. Um, 97 goals, only 33 allowed. So it's allowing less than a goal a game, which if Liverpool wasn't in the division, allowing only 23 goals would be even more impressive. Um, but plus 64 in the balance league is a pretty incredible result. Um, it did win the average league. We've talked about on other videos, the average league is can be difficult because of what all of these teams being at the same level does to form and morale in the division. So 73 points, winning this division by seven with a plus 47 goal difference. Again, under a goal a game defensively, only 26 allowed in this division, which every game is competitive, right? It is really impressive. 73 scored, so it is uh, getting to that, just about that two goal game um, threshold. In fact, it did get to the two goal a game threshold while allowing less than a goal, right? So a plus 47 goal difference, far and away the best in the division, and it reflects again very well in this tactic. Then in the underdog teams league, 109 goals scored here with this tactic with two DMs and only one striker, 32 allowed. So three out of the four divisions, it allowed less than a goal a game. In all of the divisions, it scored more than two a game. Um, it's a really good tactic. It's something that I, I encourage you to try out in your save, especially if you have um, those kind of RPM sort of players that can transition from defense to offense and take those risks effectively. Like in this tactic, I, I put Matteo Piscina um, in one of those roles because they have, and Fabian, both of them have defensive attributes as well as the ability to kind of go forward and really turn the game around. Um, these fullbacks don't have to be pace merchants. They don't have to have high crossing, right? Like the one highlight we saw with fullbacks was Mario Rui playing a through ball, right? So passing vision teamwork probably more important than crossing and pace um, which is something that you kind of have to think about like what attributes do you need uh, for the players to succeed most in their roles so uh, this tactic has a lot of potential I'd love to hear uh, in the comments how it does for you um, and if it's something you're interested in as well as just liking and commenting and subscribing to the video and the channel in general um, you can find links to that discord server where this tactic is available for download also in the description below and we'll see you next time for test number nine. Bye.